let's talk about one of the surest paths to making your business successful fast which would be hiring many people delay put it off don't want to do it struggle with it but one of the benchmarks to how successful your business would be is the sooner that you hire the greater chance you have of long-term success the sooner that you hire that will be very very important in your business now I'm gonna say some stuff that you really really should pay attention to this pollen is driving me crazy be sure to go below and get your free 19 business courses and be sure to join the Hustlers Kung Fu Community Facebook group because that's where we'll be doing the Q&A for webinars. How does one hire? You know, I'm gonna go through the process of things I did and I'm gonna talk about some of my struggles with hiring. Number one, when you hire someone, you gotta have a plan for them. Just because you're busy isn't good enough. You've got to sit down and craft a program for them. And the program includes training, which means as you're, and this is why hiring early is so important, is you're going to lose ground because you've got to train and manage. Even if you hire someone who has a lot of experience, they don't have experience working for you, your personality, your temperament, all that still has to come into play and it must gel. I'll give you an example. When I hired my first assistant, not Amy, but the one before that, it forced me to work harder because I was used to just getting up, doing what I wanted to do. And I was like, oh shit, she's coming. All right, so I had to prepare her work. It was just horrible because it was a different hiring model than when I was hiring installation guys or I was hiring labor guys. It's like, you big, you strong, you move shit? Okay, you're hired. No, it was so, totally, totally different. And my uh, business partner had hired the folks to help her with the accounting stuff like that, so I wasn't even part of that. So I struggled with that. And then with Amy, it was much cleaner because I already knew what I wanted her to do. I already had, you know, just to give you just how I manage. I give her weekly assignments because she's doing a lot of stuff for other things that I'm doing. And I just get an update email when this is done. That's kind of how it works. A lot of freedom. I don't really micromanage. And But if you're a micromanager, and some of you are, you're going to have to find someone who can deal with that. Because me, I would buckle under micromanagement and I would rebel and I would talk shit about you and I would say all kind of nasty things behind my breath and be looking for another job. But the hiring process is just that. It's a process. I was talking to a client yesterday. It's like, you got to hire someone. Let's be clear. There will be mistakes made. Bad things will happen. Do not even worry about that because the good that will have come from this process is so much better. You know, I keep it real. You can hire someone that their resume can look awesome. They could be just killing it on paper. And then you get them and they're just a yard bird. Just totally, totally nothing but trouble. And that happens and that's going to happen. You can't let that dissuade you. Now, one of the things that you should do if you have a job, if you have a job and you want to start a business, is you want to hire an employee ASAP, which means you're going to spend all of the money that the business makes on an employee probably in the beginning. It means no money for you, but see, you own the asset. You got to really wrap your head around that. It's very important because with some of my, because this is, this is a big, big thing because it's scary. Um, you you got to get with the payroll taxes. You're responsible for people. People, There's a lot to it, but once again, it's worth it because of the things 
that the employees will bring to your business. I recently hired three moderators for the Facebook group because it's a lot of time to search out for business related content and I hired three. Now do I need three right now? No, I don't. But in the future I will. The best time to hire people is before you need them. Because when you need them, then you've got that crush of you need them, but you run the business. So all of a sudden you're just pulled in all these directions. I know it seems too expensive for you to go ahead and hire somebody while you could do the work. Now let me tell you the trap that you are entering in willingly. <clears throat> it's a nasty trap. It's a trap that can literally cost you millions. It's the me, 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 me trap. No one can do it as well as me. I am the best there is. I am the owner of the business. Now, the second part of that trap is when you personally serve your customers, they will expect you to always serve them. And they will buck up against you if you try to introduce them to someone else. It's just gonna be rough. Now, this is one of the reasons. Now, I'm giving you a lesson because some people are like, oh God, he's just talking about himself. All right, I already know that the people who are coming in, 1,500, 2,500, they're dealing with me. They will not, you know, my accountability manager will deal a little bit because the accountability manager is gonna be for a larger project that I have just to help me manage what's going on. But I already know someone's paying me 1,500, 2,500, 5,000 a month. They wanna deal with me. Hence the reason that it's only gonna be 25 or 30 people because that's what I feel that I can effectively manage. Once I get there, if I can handle more, I'll put that out there. But once I get to that number, that's pretty much where I'm gonna be because I don't wanna be shortchanging anybody and I don't want to be running myself ragged. So effectively, <clears throat> that's what it's gonna be. But with that, now this is, this is part of the hiring thing. Going back to the trap, if you start your mobile detail business now, you start your window washing business now, you start your residential cleaning business now, you start your light manufacturing business now, and you go out and get yourself a salesperson from day one, you will make way more money than if you do everything yourself. And this is why. Let's go back to the three moderators. That has freed me up to the tune of five to six hours a day. Now, does it take five or six hours a day to post stuff? No, it doesn't. But it takes five or six hours a day to read it, to make sure that the content is appropriate, to make sure that things are going the way. You know, I just don't post shit to post shit. So I make it sure that it's compatible to what we're doing, which takes a lot of time and takes a lot of energy. And what happens is, that was 30 hours a week right there. 60 hours every two weeks, 120 hours a month. Now that energy has gone into coaching and mentoring and it's a thousand percent return. Same time. This is what I mean about auditing yourself. Where does your time go? Where does your energy go? And that's why employees, as much as there's a lot to go with it, there's a lot to go with it, but they're worth it because it can help you scale your business so fast. So what I'm saying, if you are, you know, uh, Joe with the regular job and you got, let's just say $20,000, maybe five grand in the bank, 15 grand on the credit card, and you wanna do this business, I would tell you to spend maybe the first 90 days doing everything yourself. And after that 90 day mark, after that 90 day window, you're like, okay, I got enough information to bring an employee on so they can't play me stupid because I know what's going on. And still jump back into the fray maybe one day a week. But your job is ownership. Your job is management. Your job is vision. Your job is sales if need be. That's your job. And if you don't go ahead and identify your job 
it's gonna make it very hard for you to create job descriptions for your employees and this is a big big trap we my partner and I kind of sort of got into it because we did recognize the need to have employees but we didn't train people to be managers so that's when we got sick everything shut down if we had went the extra step and it trained people to be managers we could have been sick and the money would have still been coming in that's one of the mistakes that I made that I can tell you don't make that mistake put that in your head now that you're gonna have managers at some point you know you don't have to have them now you don't even have to have them the first two or three years but you have to have that in your corporate DNA your charter your guidelines your goals to work because if you write it down that's like a thousand percent of making it happen so it's like at two three years I'm gonna have managers going to my friend who was gonna sell her business and I talked her out of it and I said go out and hire someone uh, the person she hired make 80 grand plus bonus but that person managed the office the business started making an additional two hundred and thirty thousand a year so subtract that hundred thousand for the, the manager and it's still another six figures positive and she doesn't have to go in the office uh, I know from her Facebook she took six trips last year she was all over the place she was all over the world and she's making more money than when she was doing it herself. But once again, she kind of got caught up as we all do with, she was serving her customers so well, they wanted her and no one else. So the sooner that you start hiring and bringing people in, the sooner you will get out of that. It's a big trap. I got friends who have businesses 10, nine years old and they're still serving those early customers because if they don't, they're gone. They're just gone. They just, no, I want you. And, and it's, it's, no one tells you this because most of the people you know don't have businesses. Then a lot of business owners don't want to talk about it because some of them are still caught up in that trap and it's very much a problem. It's a very large problem. Now, the third thing is when you're small, it is better to make those bad hiring decisions when the container of risk is so small. You're making 500 bucks a month, you hire someone part-time, you completely screw it up, you learn a lot of lessons, you learn better questions to ask, you learn a better way to handle. You're just not hurting yourself that much. But if you wait until you know you've pushed out you you're making like you know five hundred thousand a year you're busy as shit you got to get someone in there that's when the fuckery is going to creep into your business because you're so busy and going back to one of the things that i'll do like one of my class i'm gonna well one two three i'm gonna help them with the hiring process more than likely i would probably be conducting interviews because i've done it before i know the questions to ask plus i'm going to give them my uh, employee model which is to bring people on as paid interns, you know, for all the legal folks like, well, you bring them in as attorney. No, bring them in as paid interns, put them on a contract for 90 days. For 90 days, you're gonna get paid, but you're interviewing for your job. So if in 90 days, if you don't perform per certain metrics, goodbye, and they can't sue. Very simple, very easy. But once again, when you start to hear this stuff about from people who've never hired anybody, never had a payroll well you can't do that i'm like motherfucker i've done that shit before i really there's something i really did if you knew it would blow your minds and we still it's just i'm not going there i'm not uh, i'm not going there i want to go there but i'm not going there but essentially this is a very critical part now with a lot of uh online folks i'm gonna talk to you everybody's all enamored with vas I've had a few VAs. I don't like it. I had some good VAs. They weren't bad people. They weren't bad at all. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. I'd rather have someone that I can reach out and talk to. Not doesn't necessarily have to be here. And you know, because you know, there's a VA and then there's working remotely. You know, IBM, uh, Siemens, um, there's a lot of people who have 
folks deployed remotely who are employees and they're not VAs. So there's, there's a lot of fuckery with the terminology. Because Amy doesn't live here, but she's not a VA. She's an employee. And it's uh, very, very interesting how that relationship's developing. But for you internet folks, my thoughts to you would be to get someone local at first so you can go through this training stuff and seriously you can make more money faster like way more money faster you now all this is very contrarian to all the stuff that you're hearing but i'm giving you my experience as i have gone through this process you know with the vas because i have a serious book of experience from hiring people in the physical world you know, doing installs, doing, you know, 20 floors of furniture installs, managing that to hiring a VA, to hiring an assistant, to now hiring not one, not two, but three Facebook moderators. And essentially, I picked the people who were already halfway doing the job anyway. It's just, bam, you now have a badge and here's a little change at the end of the month. And I can tell you, it's made a huge difference and this has only been going on 48 hours. It's a huge difference. The group looks different. Uh, there's many things that I'm going to implement once I sit down with the team and talk to them. But that hiring of the moderators is freeing me up to make millions. That's how important hiring is. And it's not something that you should put off. It's not something you should be afraid of. You should have concerns. You should have concerns. There's a lot of things going on there. But you can use the power of a contract to protect your ass even on a part-time employee just because see the thing is if you give them a contract this spells out all the terms if you follow all the terms you're good now the contract also puts some handcuffs on you there's certain things that you have to do and you can't just you can write a one-sided contract but if you're sued, if it's like seriously one-sided, they'll probably void it. So if you just write a fair, simple, simple, just, you're gonna work for me for 90 days at this wage. What you're doing during this 90-day window is interviewing for a final position. And if certain conditions, blah, 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 are not met at the end of 90 days, or if you feel that this isn't for you, you can actually leave at any time. And at the end of 90 days, because, you know, a lot of people, even they hate the job, if they need money, they're not going to leave. They're just going to show up and not show out. They'll stay there and keep, continue to do that. But that can protect you because it just spells out what's going on. And many people are afraid of this. And, you know, you don't need a, an attorney. As long as they sign it, you sign it, and you just record it. With, you know what I mean? Put yourself on and record the conversation. You're good. Um, and there's going to be a lot of that because... We're entering a period, whoa, <laughs> we're entering a period where you're going to have a lot of people doing those kind of deals. A lot of kind of, I mean, I, I've got contracts. Uh, some of my best clients, I cannot tell you who they are because I signed an NDA. And, you know, it's frustrating because if I could say, hey, I did X, Y, and Z for, you know, B, I would get more business, like a lot more. But... It is what it is because I signed that contract and I can't say anything as much as I want to as much as I want to but you know this is life on the interwebs all right today I want you to sit down and draft a contract and to put out to think about your employees. All right, you know, just to say you have no business, right? You have no business idea, no concept. Great. Sit down and think what would you want an employee to do in your business? Think about it. It's a great exercise. As many people like they want people, but they don't know what they want the people to do. I don't encourage having an entourage just to like, oh, I got people. Think about it. Because now the way that I hire is 
I hire on efficiency. I can do a lot of things really well, but doing those things does not move my business forward fast. They move it forward, but let's just going back to the moderators. It's gonna launch this business forward by five years because it's freed me up. I mean, seriously, I wake up, there's wonderful conversations going on in the Facebook group. There's a lot of engagement and I think what? 80 people joined the group in the last 48 hours. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna do there, but the point is, I teach you what I'm doing, which is management, which is implementation, which is execution. I am teaching you what I am doing. And I, I keep bringing that up because there's a, a lot of people who are so used to sucking the fake internet dick that they don't know that you don't have to suck fake internet dick. You don't have to suck dick at all unless you want to. You can go ahead and open your mind, use your logic, and see some stuff. Because someone asked me why am I not partnered up with a lot of people, and plainly after my investigation, a lot of them are full of shit. And when I say full of shit, we don't do the same thing. I come from a real physical business background. That's my background. Now, some people have figured out a really good internet model and they've built a real business via the internet and working hard, but that's not all of them. Because once again, I don't teach you how to be an internet marketer. I teach you how to build a real business where you are making real money where you are and then go to the internet. Because I know that there's a lot of people like, well, you know, everyone's rushing to the internet. True. There's a bunch of bullshit rushing to the internet. You come to the internet with execution, a better plan, better focus, you'll win in a crowded market. Did Uber invent taxi cabs or courier or ride share? Hmm. They weren't first, they weren't second, they weren't third, they weren't fourth, they weren't even fifth. They just out executed everybody in a very crowded market. Airbnb, did they invent, you know, rent rooms? Nope. So don't even get caught up in that, like, well, you know, if I don't do it now, I'm gonna miss out. That's that short term, I gotta get money thinking that's gonna keep you broke and poor and disenfranchised and unhappy. It, it is. Start thinking right now. I mean, if you don't have any money, if you're broke Dick Danny, you're a penniless Priscilla, cool. You can still plan for the future now. You can still start doing small steps, making micro commitments to get yourself together for the future. Just sitting at home like, well, I'll, Glendon, that's all nice. I'll do that when I'm ready. You're ready right now. You're just not taking action. If you went ahead, and let's say you started selling cookies, right? And then you got four of your friends because you're gonna have a friend who's gonna be like, Jamie on the spot you're gonna have a friend that's gonna just show up because of the community <laughs> just to talk and you're gonna have some friends who will halfway do what you want them to do but they're friends so you don't go off on them that is a great management exercise because when you let, 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 let's just be straight when you start hiring employees your disposition as a manager is gonna have to change because you're gonna be dealing with so many different personalities and you're just gonna to have to take a deep breath, lay back and let shit unfold. You're gonna have folks you just, they're just right there on the edge. You wanna get rid of the ass, but they bring so much value to the business. I had a guy that worked for me on the truck. I could not stand this motherfucker. God, he worked my last nerve. But he was good at what he did and he was good with the customer. So I told my partner, for any issues, you deal with him. Because he was bringing value to the business. Because it wasn't about me, it was about the business. I couldn't stand that motherfucker. I was so glad when he got another job. It's like, ha ha! Hey, here you go. Hey, here's your two weeks so you don't have to come back. Here, cash, fuck it. Here's a little extra. Motherfucker. <laughs> I had another guy I hired to help me unload some furniture in Clarkson, Tennessee. This was an eBay sale. I decided to roll up one Saturday morning because it wasn't that far. I actually got a fucking ticket. I was so mad because he was supposed to meet me at the warehouse, 8 a.m. Dude didn't have a job. So I called him, right? I'm getting the furniture, I'm ready, I'm waiting. And I call and this chick answers the voice. 
And I'm like, hey, I'm looking for Benton. And then I hear this scratch through this wood. Tell him I'm sick. I'm like, damn. You, not only are you janky, but you are not even clever with your jankiness. I hear you telling her to say, tell him I'm sick. But you in the bed with some pussy. That's what's going on. It was cold. It was December. It was cold morning. He was in bed with some pussy. Probably just got his dick sucked to fucking us, whatever. And he didn't want to leave that warmth to go out and get some money. True story. I'll never forget that. So I get to the client's place who lived in the apartment and was told it was a house. So me and her drag all this shit up three fucking flights of stairs. My back hurt, man, I was I was hot, hot! Just, that, and this is the stuff that happens. <laughs> this is what, you know. Oh man, I, never, I will never forget that mess. But don't let that scare you because see, this is the thing. I'm going to tell you all the fucked up shit that can happen. All the little landmines and the crazy shit. Because after you get past that, and after you deal with those people, you're going to become such a strong person. You're going to look at your friends and family differently. Not saying you're not going to love them and not hang out with them. I'm not talking about that. You're just going to be like, ah, oh, I see why your life is like that. I mean, you may be looking at them like that, but no, it's really going to become illuminating. You're going to be like, damn. And you're just going to be shaking your head. And once again, I got friends who I, I've literally watched implode. And one of the things is, as a human is, sometimes you got to let people, you got to give people room to be human, which means you're going to sit there and watch them do some fucked up shit. And it's your respect as a friend. You got to be there for them when they fall down. Even though you see them tumbling down the stairs. And you're like, I'm trying to save you. But <sighs> just be there. But definitely put hiring on your list. Even if you don't have a business. you know. And this is one of the things that kills eBay people. Uh, kills FBA folks. The lack of hiring. Because you don't have to have a team of 50 people. You can run an eight-figure business with a team of five to maybe 20 people. That's being done all over the place. So, just some thoughts. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.